Okay, we already learned one of these properties the other day. It's called commutative. What root word do you guys remember I said that it was related to? Commuting. And what does commuting do for people? It helps us move around. This property moves numbers. Numbers can move. We know that it works with multiplication because the example we used the other day was multiplication. But it does not work with division. We'll give examples to prove that in a moment. What else did we decide that this works with? It does work with addition. And what is the inverse of addition? It does not work with subtraction. So an example we could do is six times two is going to equal the same thing as two times six. They both equal 12, yes? Yeah. So underneath it, let's put 12 does equal 12. It also works with addition. 8 plus 4 is equal to 4 plus 8. Oh, that's funny. I just made that one up. I didn't realize it was going to 12 again. And we get 12 is equal to 12. Just to be clear, this works on things that don't equal 12. It works on anything we multiply and anything that we add. <clears throat> it does not work with division and multiplication. Here's our non-examples. I'm sorry, did I just say that? Yeah. I should stop talking today. Okay, <laughs> let me try again. It does not work with the inverses of multiplication and addition. It does not work with division or subtraction. Because 7 minus 4 is not equal to 4 minus 7. If I move those numbers, what happens with this here? 7 minus 4 is equal to 3. 4 minus 7 is equal to negative 3. They're opposites of each other. They're equal distance from 0, but do they equal each other? No. So it does not work with subtraction. And just really quickly, the example we used for showing it does not work with division. Remember we watched this with vocabulary the other day? Yeah. Our example was 12 divided by 6 is equal to 2. But 6 divided by 12 does not equal 2. It equals 1 half. So these do not equal each other e either. So moving numbers in a problem only works with addition and multiplication, not their inverses. Our next problem, or uh, property, that we will do some example problems with, is associative. And whenever I think of associative, I think of parentheses. The associative property comes from the same root that created the word associate or associate. Who are the people that you associate with? They're the people you hang around, right? So this is all about groups. We can group people by people who like each other. We can group numbers that work better together. So quick example, the numbers don't change place. They don't move. They just get grouped differently. So if I do 3 plus 4 plus 5, that is equal to 3 plus 4 plus 5. What's different is the numbers that I grouped. And because I have parentheses in there, I have to do what's in the parentheses first because of order of operations. So the first side would say 3 plus 9. And the second side would say 7 plus 5. But they both equal what? 3 plus 9 is? Oh my gosh, I did 12 again. What a legend. And 7 plus 5 is also 12. Wow. That's legendary. 
this property is really helpful when we see something grouped that we're like, oh, I don't want to add those. Those are not numbers that are easy to add when we're dealing with bigger numbers. So if I had something like 17 plus 3 plus 8, and the 3 plus 8 was grouped, I would rather have the 17 and the 3 grouped because I know that that equals 20. So you could change the grouping to make it numbers that you like to work with better. Make sense? Yeah. This also works with multiplication <coughs> and addition, but not with their inverses. And I'll just do a real quick example of a multiplication. 6 times 2 times 5 is equal to 6 times 2 times 5. And again, this gets back to our conversation the other day. It really just depends on what numbers you like to work with best. This is 6 times 10. This is 12 times 5. And we all know those math facts. They both end up equaling 60. Yes? So how do you uh, make the multiplication sign like, to the parentheses, right? I could have put this right up in next to the parentheses if I wanted. Yeah. I didn't because I was trying to show that I have got three separate numbers in this case, but you're correct. Okay. Last property for this side of our notes is one of my favorites, which is good because I use it a lot in algebra too, as well, you guys, next year. It's called the distributive property. And this is one that shares. I always think about distributive as... My husband, a long time ago, worked for UPS. What is UPS known for doing? Delivering boxes. Do you guys know that there is a big UPS center here in Tequila? It's over by um, Costco. And they call it their distribution center. It comes from the same route as this property. What happens is, Airplanes fly into Boeing Field and bring all our packages from wherever to Seattle area. They go to the distributive center, distribution center. They sort them and put them on trucks that send them out into our neighborhoods, and they put them where they go, right? They're taking them as a group, and they're sharing them out where they belong. This property does something really similar. <clears throat> when we use this, we use what I call the claw. It was really funny. I had a meeting with the high school teachers at the beginning of the year, and one of them was like, which one of you teaches kids the claw? It's like, I don't know if I should say it's me. What if they don't like it? And I asked, like, well, do you guys like it? And she goes, yeah, it's really, it's good. It helps them remember. And I'm like, okay, that's me. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to see in a minute what I mean by the claw. So if I have three times four plus five, This 3 is being multiplied by the 4 and by the 5. Now, in reality, this is a pretty simple problem. We could do 4 plus 5 first, 9, and multiply it by 3, and we would get 27. But I'm going to use this problem to show you the distributive property, which can help with numbers that are harder to work with than these. Okay? We know our answer is going to be 27. Here's the claw. I want you to show what I'm sharing here. And this is equal to 3 times 4 plus 3 times 5. This gets back to Randy's question earlier. Instead of using the multiplication symbol, I'm just putting this 3 against the parentheses and showing that means it's being multiplied. So I shared the 3. I distributed it using, do you see the claw? It kind of looks like this. What's 3 times 4? What's 3 times 5? Does that equal 27? Yeah. So our mental math earlier lets us know that this method worked. This property is used a lot in algebra. If I've got 2 times x plus 4, I have no idea what this x is in this problem, and sometimes we don't find out what the x is equal to. Sometimes it's just there and we just work with it. I would share the 2 times the x and the 2 times the 4. And 2 times x just ends up being 2x. 
plus 2 times 4 is 8. And that's it. That problem is finished. One of my favorite uses for distributive property is being able to break down problems using it and it makes it easier to do some mental math. So if it's not in a place for you to distribute, if I've got a problem like 3 times 27, I don't know that fact in my head. I could do 3 times 25 in my head, easy, right? 3 times 25 is 75. This is a little bit more than that. If I show how to do the distributive property with this, I'm taking the 27 and I'm going to break it up and do 3 times 20 plus 3 times 7. Those are both facts that I know without having to use a calculator or sit down and write it out. And I get 60 plus 21 and I get 81. Which is a little bit more than 75, so that makes sense, doesn't it? But what I did is I took a number and I broke it into its place values and then I took the smaller number and I distributed it to both of those. Does that make sense? Okay.